A robbery every 45 seconds. A violent crime every 20 seconds. A rape every five minutes. Unfortunately, these statistics have held true in our country for a very long time. Now, even more unfortunate, if we add in the very heartbreaking crimes that have taken place in our schools and elsewhere in our country, we set the table for a scenario of looking at our personal safety. Hi, my name is Joe Dwyer, and I am the sensei here at Noble Strength Dojo, a place where we are enlightened every day with ways to increase our personal safety, but also to increase our emotional safety as well. Today, we're going to spend some time together looking at our personal safety. I ask you to consider, as I have done in my life, and look at the number of times you have looked to purchase insurance, either on your car, on your house, on your life, many different ways. Today we look at an insurance policy for our safety. Probably something that we don't do nearly as often as we should. But with the statistics that I just shared with you, I think it is time for all of us to take stock in this all important area. The potential attacker that we face is likely a repeat offender. Scary to say, but true, that these predators spend time in prisons perfecting what they do. So they spend up to eight more hours a day becoming better potential attackers. At the same time, unfortunately, we do not spend nearly the amount of time we should in protecting ourselves. The attacker has a couple of very interesting characteristics, almost generalized in whatever crime they're looking to commit. They are highly motivated. They are looking to be quick, to do what they have to do quickly. They do not want to be around crowds or light. And they certainly want to pick out the easiest target possible. We, the potential victims, have a couple of characteristics as well. We do not carry ourselves with the awareness that we should. We think it cannot happen to us. Unfortunately, a very dangerous mindset. And we are filled with fear at the moment it does happen, because it can. So in our journey together today, we are not going to become experts in self-defense. I must tell you that because I wouldn't want to mislead you. However, we are going to cover some important aspects of personal safety. And they're going to be pretty easy to remember. They're going to be what we call the three A's of personal safety. First and foremost is our awareness. And we will spend some time talking about our awareness and how we could be better at it. Secondly is our attitude. How we act when that possible unfortunate moment occurs in our life. And finally, there are actions. Actions that we can all improve upon and we can all do with a little bit more knowledge that we are going to impart to you. So thank you for being on this journey. It's important for all of us not only for our personal safety, but ultimately to get to a place of more peace in our world. Our first A is awareness. And awareness, arguably, is the most important aspect of our journey today. And the reason is because the potential attacker chooses that individual that they feel is the easiest target. Well, I have to tell you, the easiest target continues to grow for these potential attackers because more and more I witness in myself and in others a true lack of awareness of our surroundings and what we're doing. Most times than not, we are preoccupied and not thinking about being here now. Or as my canine friends like to show us and teach us, living in the moment, right? So, we start with awareness with one very important aspect that we all need to be conscious of. And that is 
never stereotype anyone. First and foremost, that's something that we should never do in any part of our life, but especially when it comes to our personal safety. It is unfortunately out there in the things that we see that the potential attacker looks like a bad person. That is not something that we want to put into our minds. Potential attackers go out of their way to be sure that they look safe. So never stereotype anyone would be the first and very important step in our awareness training. Secondly, be where you are and focus on where you are. Let me put it to you very plainly. In this day of advanced technology, which I certainly see all the benefits of, we live in a place where we are walking, not paying attention to our surroundings at all, busy looking at our phones, on our phones, typing a message, really things that are very ripe to a potential attacker for looking and saying, that's an easy target. If we can just refrain from activities like that, carry ourselves with our head up, our peripheral vision in a good place as we walk from place to place, whether it's home to car, whether it's store to car, car to mall, whatever it might be, that awareness will take us really to a better place of safety. Mostly because that potential attacker will now look and say, not an easy target, I am walking away. And that walking away just really enhanced your personal safety. When it comes to awareness training, as I've mentioned, it is of utmost importance. Certainly, we would love as many students here at Noble Strength Dojo to practice that awareness training and the techniques that go along with it. Realizing that may not be possible, depending on your geographic location or other potential reasons, there are ways that each one of us could practice our awareness every single day. I'll give you a very simple one and then you could take off from there. When you're in your house performing a chore, like brushing your teeth for example, which you're going to say, well what is he talking about? Well, when you're brushing your teeth, I urge you not to think about washing clothes. I urge you not to think about having lunch. I want you to think about brushing your teeth. When you've moved on to washing clothes, do not think about brushing your teeth. Do not think about having lunch. I think you get the point. If we can get to a mindset that we are going to concentrate and focus and have that increased awareness of what we are doing at each moment of the day, it will carry on to those very important parts of life. Awareness training. Please start as soon as possible and look into areas of your life to enhance it. We move now from awareness to attitude. And it is true that in almost all of the cases, the attitude of the person being attacked is usually one filled with fear and surprise. Now, this is a difficult place to overcome, but not impossible. And the most important thing you need to understand is that you can turn this attitude around on a potential attacker. Now, if you were accosted by somebody and you are standing face to face with them, if you stand with a fearful look on your face and they are seeing that, it will increase the motivation of the potential attacker. However, they have no idea whether you are trained or not. They have, again, picked you out because you seem to be an easy target. To turn that around in a very positive way for each one of us, you would adapt a fighting stance. It's easy to do. I will show you how easy it really is. From this place, again, being accosted, instead of the look of fear that you might have on your face, instead, you get into a fighting stance. Very simple. One leg forward and both hands up. This may in fact tell the attacker, oh no, 
I did not choose the right potential person. This person seems to know what they're doing. Maybe I need to abort right now. And if they do, very good situation, yes? However, let's add something to it. Not only do we put ourselves into a fighting stance, but we add what we call in martial arts a kiai. A kiai literally translates to spirit yell. And the way it's done in the dojo, which yes, you can adapt this, is taking the air all the way from our low stomach and expelling it out through our mouth. So with that, it's in, it, the intention of kiai is to relax you and also send the message to a potential attacker that you are not going down easy. So here's a very good kia. Hey! Now can you do that? Of course you can. Now here in the dojo, we seem to have people who will get a little embarrassed. I understand that. When I started training, I was too. But again, this is our personal safety. To do that, once again, to launch yourself into a fighting stance and put that ki out there, hey! will tell the attacker, you have chosen the wrong person. And all of a sudden, your attitude has gone from fearful to confident. And that is exactly what you need to do. So with that in mind, I also ask you to consider what you say to a potential attacker. If they approach you and you are in that position where you're going to say something, what you say is very important. For example, if somebody comes up to you and you put that ki out there along with that fighting stance, but that still does not send them away, then you may need to say something to try to distract them at this point. And that attitude is very important. So things not to say are Please go away from me. That's obviously much too timid. The other thing not to say is, Get away from me, you low life. That also is not advisable because that will raise the anger in the potential attacker. So something in the middle of the road, which is can be effective, is, Don't touch me. Get away from me. That is authoritative, that is strong, but that does not put you in an adversarial position as much as the other things that could be said. So now we have taken awareness and we've moved into attitude. Again, very closely related and now we will move to potential actions. Things that we must do if all else fails and now we must defend ourselves. We've covered some very important areas of awareness and we moved very well into attitude. Now we will overlap into actions. For if that scenario now plays out such that you were being aware, you did take that fighting stance, you did get that key eye out there, but now you still are in a position where the potential attacker did not flee the scene you need to take further action. And the first action, in addition to what to say and what not to say, is to call for a friend. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, the friend might not be there. Well, the potential attacker does not know that. So in your fighting stance and in your ki eye, now you're gonna say, Steven, I'm over here. They could be right around the corner for all the attacker knows. And once again, it's an added self-defense action for you to consider. In addition to calling for a potential friend or, a, or an impossible case, a friend that may or may not be there, the other thing that you can do is yell fire. And yes, you yell fire. And the reason is everybody wants to come out and see a fire. So yelling fire could bring people out from wherever the surrounding area is and once again, remember the potential attacker. He wants to be fast. He doesn't want to see any other people. So these are actions that each one of us can do to increase our personal safety. As we continue with possible actions, we consider 
target areas that we should be looking at at our potential attacker. And there are two that I just want to call your attention to. First and foremost are the eyes. The eyes, if struck effectively, obviously blind the potential attacker for that time that you need to get away. Strikes to the eyes are extremely painful and debilitating even if it's just for a minute or two, which is all you need to flee the scene. The other one that we will talk about are the knees. Although we're not going to go into it in this video, easy kicks and strikes to the knees are the other best way to disable a potential attacker. These are what I call the top two targets. Certainly there are others, but let's stay with these for a minute because the next thing we want to consider is our environment. Once again, when this unfortunate possible attack takes place in our life, we are paralyzed with fear for a moment. And let's be honest, I don't care how much training you have, each of us would be stricken with a little bit of fear. And when that happens, we're not thinking clearly. What we need to do is remove that as much as we can, and the key I helps, and consider our environment. Is there a chair close by in a bar area? Is there a drink close by that we could throw into the potential attacker's eyes? If you're outside, is your purse, if you're a woman and you have a purse with you, is there anything that you can use to swing at the potential attacker or throw at them to blind them instantly so that you can flee? Is there change in your pocket that you could take out and throw into their face? Again, hopefully creating that blindness for a second. These and many other things anything else because the most important thing to think about is on this situation in the street there are no rules you are entrusted to protect yourself this is your personal safety so considering your environment and potential weapons that you can use are extremely important in this action section of our time together now certainly as we talk about actions we have to consider the possibility that the potential attacker has a weapon. And when they have a weapon, well, we have ratcheted up the caution and what we do to a different level. For with a weapon, obviously, the danger has increased. So I strongly recommend that what you do in terms of an action, if faced with a weapon, is to take money, whether it's your purse, whether it's money from your pocket, your wallet, whatever it is, and toss it far away for the potential attacker to consider going to get it. Again, remember, they want to be fast, and robberies are probably the number one motive on the mind of a potential attacker. So if you take that money, wallet, purse, whatever it may be, and toss it to a place where it diverts his attention and he starts to go for it and you can escape, your personal safety has been achieved. The most important thing of what we're talking about in this journey together. We at Noble Strength Dojo, we are available to coming to schools, coming to places of business, to do more in depth personal safety seminars and discussions, including for our schools on bullying and being more compassionate, which certainly rolls right into this topic of personal safety. We all know that's true. So I appreciate this time together and I thank you for your attention. Before we conclude, I think it's important to put out there, for lack of better words, a disclaimer. We have covered some very important very easy to follow and very critical personal safety attributes. Awareness, action, attitude. However, what we didn't do is make any of us an expert. So I can't guarantee that any of these things will work to total proficiency. And saying that, even if you're training for a number of years in a good martial arts dojo, you still may not have any guarantees. 
But like we started out in talking about insurance for our safety of our car or our home, there's no guarantees there either. But what we have done, and I'm confident of this, is we've provided some real positive, yes, somewhat easy to perfect attributes to help with your personal safety. Ultimately, we would love this whole world to live the noble strength way. Thank you.